This is obviously the most okay. viral interview I think you've done with Kathy, with Kathy Newman, w would you say? Yes. Okay. Yes, definitely. And, and it's one where I've seen even leftists, if you look at the feedback saying, okay, this is an example of someone who I disagree with, but this person is reasonable. The feedback on the Kathy Newman interview is almost entirely positive. Would you say that's a, compared with other interviews that were seen as more polarizing, would you say that's a relatively accurate assessment? Yeah, the only exception would be that there was a flurry of newspaper articles after the interview came out uh, claiming that Kathy Newman was victimized by my evil army of trolls because mm. I seem to apparently have an evil army of five million trolls. Yes. Which is a lot of trolls. You know, at some point you start wondering if the trolls are just normal people. Yeah. But yes, I would say that the, the apart from the press, and there was a lot they, of- they, were, they, they want people to think you have direct access to Jim Henson's creature shop and you're sending them out. Yeah, it's- Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And well, and the, the Guardian claimed, and Channel 4 as well, that they had to bring in the police to do a security analysis. And, and you can bring in the police under any circumstances. Doesn't mean that the threats are credible. And I don't think they produced any evidence whatsoever that no. the threats were, the threats so-called were credible. But yes, I would say overwhelmingly, the consensus is that Kathy Newman conducted that interview in a highly biased, ideologically rigid, confrontational, and inappropriate manner. Okay, good. And so I just want to make sure that we recap this. So your most viral interview and certainly the feedback among amongst viewers and listeners as positive as we've seen this year. Let's, let's kind of separate the media from it a little bit because, you know, yeah. Kathy Newman is one right. of their own. So, um, okay. yeah, yeah. So I think a, a big question here is, you know, why is that? Why were you so successful with this? And obviously you're wildly successful. So by the way, take this or leave it. And I am not at all assuming that for people, hold your comments, that I know anything more than Jordan Peterson on any given topic. He's a doctor. I'm not. Got it. What I will say is this. As an intellectual, as kind of an existentialist, and you've talked about this, sometimes you can be almost too smart for your own good. What I think you did with this interview so well, um, it, it, certainly uh, I would say, more perfectly than I've seen in any other interview is this this form of I've talked about it pattern disruption and sometimes you'll you'll wax on sometimes which is in a way that's very intelligent but the viewer may not necessarily directly correlate it to a point I think what you did with Kathy Newman that was so effective is you asked a follow-up question you made her clarify her questions which showcased them as absurd and you lasered in on an answer better than I think I've ever seen you do. Not that you haven't done it well, but you did it with every question here. It was almost like a boxer just coming back, making her overreach and straight down the pipe. That's what I saw. Would you say maybe that's uh, why? Did I lose? Oh, there he is. I think I was for that interview properly. Yeah, I was fortunate to have handled that interview properly. I think what clued me in, I think, very rapidly was when we when I first sat down with her in front of the cameras before they were running, she was very friendly and engaging and, and chirpy. And, and you know, I thought that we were actually going to have a conversation because that's what we were having before the cameras rolled. But as soon as the cameras went on, it was like she was a completely different person. Mm -hmm. And what happened in some sense was that I... I, the clinical psychologist in me turned on because that was such a dramatic shift in character. I thought, oh, oh, there's something strange going on here. And so I got really detached from the interview. Not, not, not completely detached because it was still a high pressure situation, I would say. But I started just to watch what she was doing instead of taking it personally. Mm -hmm. And what I realized almost immediately was that the person she was talking to bore virtually no resemblance to me. And so it was hard to take it personally, you know, like... If people come after you with attacks, let's say, or insults, or, or they're after your character, and they, and they cut close to the bone, well, that's one thing. But if they come at you with all sorts of accusations that really bear no relationship whatsoever to either what you think or what you said, then it's easier to be detached. And I'm, I've also been trying hard to maintain a sense of humor through everything that's happened over the last 18 months. And that's been difficult, partly because I've had very serious health problems. And of course, that makes having a sense of humor difficult, but also because in many situations, I had a lot on the line and wasn't sure how it was going to go. But my sense of humor has returned. And although I don't know if you can tell that in this interview yet, but it has. See, there's a smile. Well, it's it's ironic because usually in this, this is one of the few places where people are going, oh, Jordan Peterson laughing. But I'm just fascinated. I wanted to, yeah, to yeah. get to this. That's right. Um, you seem yeah, more relaxed. I with you. 
Yeah, there's something yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you seem more relaxed in the interview. Flu more. I, I hate to use the word, but we use this a lot in, in in combat sports. More fluid. You know, you just you were able to take what she gave you and every time return it back tenfold. And uh, and and. It's almost like, you know, that analogy, you're a tiger who kind of has to bleed a little bit before you're in the fight. I've noticed that when you're with friendly people, there's no time constraint. You have so much room to, you know, expand upon an idea. Sometimes being framed in by someone else who's confrontational uh, might bring out the best in you. And I, I think we saw that. It was formidable. Yeah, well, so, so, well, and the thing is, is that it's a lot easier to have a sense of humor when you're not feeling three quarters dead. Right, yeah. And so... You know, I'm, my health is back. I'm I'm in pretty good shape again, and so it's a lot easier to be sharp as well and to pay attention to what's going on, but also to, 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 to have a bit of a lighter touch. And I've always struggled with that with the material I deal with because it's so serious. You know, I mean, totalitarianism and atrocity is what I've been studying for 30 years, and it doesn't really get any darker than that. But I do know that even despite the fact that, that what I study is very dark. And, and I suppose some of the things I talk about is very dark too, that the humor is just unbelievably necessary. And I think I was able to keep a lighter touch in that interview and to laugh a little bit, especially at the absurdity of it, because it just became, well, I think the reason that it went viral is because the interview became its own parody. Yeah. You know, like she could have, what, what should have happened likely was that she should have gone after me like a uh, I thought afterwards, I thought that was like being mauled by 20 miniature pit bulls. <laughs> and yeah. I was sure that I was sure that Channel 4 was going to edit that and cut it up so that I would look like an absolute monster. And I guess they did that to some degree with regards to what they broadcast and also what they put, put on their Facebook page. But they put the whole interview up on YouTube, which I actually think. You know, you could say, well, more power to them, and fair enough. But I actually think they did that out of straight naivety. I don't think they had any idea whatsoever what that interview actually looked like to the outside world. <laughs> I think they were shell-shocked by the response. I really believe that. I have some inside information from Channel 4, and I've been following people's reaction to it. Like, I invited Kathy Newman to do another interview, you know, because I threw, threw a backdoor channel. And I said, look, like, why don't we basically make this right instead of, it ending this way because you've taken a lot of flack for this. Why don't we actually sit down and have a, a talk and then that'll work out fine. And she said something like, well, I need to let this die down and rethink it, but I don't understand what all the fuss is about. I thought the interview went very well. Right. It's like, well, oh, I think whoever's in charge of their YouTube account, probably not a big Kathy Newman fan and upload. She doesn't have access to YouTube. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, that's fascinating. So she didn't take you up on it. I mean, you know, yeah, I think there is some naivete there, uh, but it's it's interesting that they they uploaded that entirety. Well, we had that with Sky News. Remember that? Not you were there one time, and and uh, there were some producers there who didn't like one of their hosts, but they brought me yeah. on, and you could tell that's how I got my my gig at Fox News, and that's how I got my spots at CNN. And I was a young kid, was just a comedian, I didn't even have the show back then. It was just kind of kind of a lamb for the slaughter, and. I did all right. You know, it's like they sit me in front of Alan Combs and I did OK. And then they kept bringing me back. I don't think they always necessarily expect it. And like you said, they're out of touch. They she may have thought that she did really well in that interview.